Hello and welcome to the VBA Jetpack course by Trump Excel. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video we will learn how to record a macro and then we will go to the back end and see how does the code looks within that macro and how we can improve it. So let's get started. Here I have a new workbook and to record a macro we would go into the developer tab. Within the developer tab we have this group code. Within code we have this option record macro. So now let's record a macro that would color the cell A1 and I would select some other cell somewhere far off and what the macro needs to do is select this cell and then color this cell. So let me begin by clicking on this button which is record macro. As soon as I click on this button it opens the dialog box which asks for a macro name here. Let me say the name would be color A1. Uh, I can give a keyboard shortcut to it but be a bit cautious while you do it. Say for example I give the keyboard shortcut control S. Then this keyboard shortcut would override the keyboard shortcut in built in Excel. So if you're not using a macro control S would save your workbook. But if you use this macro and give this keyboard shortcut control S to this macro then whenever you whenever you press control S then this macro would be run and it will not save your workbook. So be a bit cautious in this case let's say we would use the keyboard shortcut control shift S. Uh, we'll store the macro in this workbook you can also store it in a personal macro workbook or a new workbook we will store it in this workbook only. Now as soon as I click OK the name is saved, the keyboard shortcut is saved and now it will start tracing my actions. So as of now I have J15 selected. I would go and I would select cell A1. Then I would go to the home tab and I would color this yellow. So I would click on this and that's it. I would go to the developer, uh, developer tab and I would stop recording. You can also come here below and you can also click on this uh, button to stop the macro. So when I stop the macro the code has been recorded in the backend. Now let's go back and see what this has recorded. So here I would press visual basic button or you can use the keyboard shortcut alt F11. So I would press alt F11 and here you would see that it has automatically introduced uh, uh, this folder which is modules because whenever I record a macro it gets recorded in a module and this module has automatically been inserted. When I double click on it, it shows me the code. Now you may think I just did two things. I selected a cell and I gave it a background color. Why there are so many lines in the code? But this is how recording a macro works. It would have a lot of codes and a lot of lines that are redundant. So I can remove a lot of lines from here. But uh, as of now, let's keep it. And let's go through this macro. So the macro always starts with sub because this is a subroutine or a procedure and the name of it is color A1. It would always end with end sub and between this we have the code here. Now anything which is here after an apostrophe in the green color is the comment which means that in this case uh, this line is not executed. It's already it's only there for uh, the purpose of uh, understanding this macro. So the user has put it as a comment. So if I want I can delete it and had I put in some comments in the macro box then it would have appeared here but this is redundant. Uh, it's a good practice to put comments if you have a big code and you want other people to use it and understand it but otherwise you can skip this. Now let's go through this code. It says range A1 which would be cell A1 dot select. So the first thing that it does is it selects A1. Then with the selection which means that now all these lines with which follow this command with would be executed. So it says with selection dot interior. With in the interior of the cell all these things happen. The pattern is Excel solid, the pattern color index is Excel automatic, the color is this, the tint and shade is zero and the pattern and shade, pattern tint and shade is zero. Now I have only changed the color. I really don't need these four lines. So if I delete these lines I don't think anything should happen but before that let's go back to Excel and let's see if this code works. So I would go to I would introduce a new sheet here and I would go to macros. Here my macro is listed. I would run it and as soon as I run it see what happens. Let me select some other cell. Let me select this cell here. I would go to macros 
color A1 and as soon as I run it this selects cell A1 and it gets a yellow color. I can try it again with the keyboard shortcut. I select this cell I16 and I press the keyboard shortcut Control Shift S and as soon as I do that it goes to the cell A1 and it gets colored. Now let's get back to the code. I would press Alt F11 and here let's prune this code. Let's cut it short. So I don't need these two lines and I don't need these two lines and I know this because I've been coding for quite some time but if you do not understand this you can leave it as it is there is no harm in leaving it but if you want this to get improved and the code to be shorter then you need to play around with it and understand what is it that you really want those other four lines of code was something that was redundant so I only want to change the color so I would only keep this and also here with selection.interior is something that I can get rid of so what I would do is I would say range a1 dot interior dot color is equal to 65535 so what I'm telling is this I don't care where you are in the worksheet just color range a1 with yellow color and let's see now how it works I am here somewhere in K9 and I would go to macros color even and when I run it okay let me change this to no fail and now when I come here I go to developer macros and now when I run it okay it says end with because I cannot have an end with without the with statement so now this is the macro now when I go to macros and run this this cell gets colored it does not get selected because I've not selected it but it gets colored so you can see that I got a big code using a record macro functionality but I then converted into a single line of code this line and this line does what I need it colors range a1 if you also want to select this uh, cell then you can use range a1 dot select and selection dot interior dot color is equal to this but uh, this is how you can play around with the code now in this case it did not matter where I was it always went back to cell A1 and it colored it but let's say I don't want this I want it to follow my steps based on where I am in this worksheet so I would go to again developer tab code and here I would click on this button which is use relative references and this is a toggle button which means that now if I click on it it is activated but if I click on it again it's not so let me click on it it's green in color which means that it is now activated now what I want to do is I want to record a macro where I would go to the right and I would color the cell so let's let's record the macro I would call it color right and again this workbook I would click OK it's recording now I would go to the cell on the right I would again go to home and now I would give it a red color or a maroon color and that's it I would go to the developer tab and stop recording now let's again go back to the code window here and I have this new code here again it's a big code there are a couple of lines that are not required it is active cell dot offset zero one dot range a one dot select and then with selection it does these things I can again change this code all I want to do is there is an active cell and with offset what it does is it would move that uh, reference to the right which means that it would not change the number of rows but it would change the number of column so now active cell whatever follows happens on the cell which is to the right of the active cell so now let me again change this code a bit what I would do is I would remove this part I would say dot interior and again I would remove all this I would again come here dot color is equal to 192 and I would remove all these and now let's go back and see what happens I would select this cell I would go to macros I would go to color right and as soon as I run it the cell to the right gets colored now it does not matter where I am it will not go back again and again to a1 wherever I am it would go to the cell on the right and give it a color again here I go to the macros uh, button color right 
run and this cell gets color so this is the difference between using relative reference and not using it if you are not using it then it would always go back to the cell that you have specified but if you are using relative references then you would have this kind of code where it would offset it would specify the position it should move in this case it is to the right one cell and it would do the required action so this is how you can record a macro and this is how you can go back and then check the code and if you want you can uh, cut short the code and then take only those lines that are required now uh, there are a couple of drawbacks in recording a macro because you cannot do everything with recording a macro uh, you cannot create a custom function for example here in this case what I did is I selected this but if I'm only recording a macro it would always go to the cell so for example here I am in sheet 4 and I want something to happen in sheet 3 if I'm recording a macro I would always have to go back to sheet 3 and do it but if you are only writing a code or if you are just modifying the code uh, that you have recorded you can do something which would happen in the back end in sheet 3 and you still can remain on sheet 4 so this is these are some of the drawbacks of recording a macro but it is one of the best ways of learning VBA coding. The reason this for this is that if you record your steps and you go back, then you can analyze and understand what is happening in the backend. You may not always know what to do and what are the objects involved and what all the, the color indexes and everything, but if you record a macro and you go back it is a ready available guide it will tell you everything what is happening obviously there would be something which would be extra there would be additional redundant lines but you would always get some help when you use recording a macro so this is how you can use you can record a macro you can use the relative references or you can use the absolute references and this is how you can go back and learn from the code so that's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.